Hi there. This is a movie about using the Nintendo Wii controller as a virtual reality input device, one that reports its position and orientation in 3D space. Such devices can be used to control a variety of 3D programs, such as the virtual clay sculpting application shown here. Clay models are confined to the wireframe box that's shown on the screen. The yellow sphere attached to the Wii controller allows the user to add new gobs of material to the model or to grab parts of an existing model and push, pull them around to create arbitrary shapes. As you can see, I'm a lousy sculptor, but I hope you get the idea. The controller can also be used to grab the entire box, move and rotate it, and shrink magnify it. This interaction would be very difficult to achieve with a regular input device, such as a mouse or a keyboard, and it also goes beyond how Wii games normally use the controller. The driver software row talks to the Wii controller via its Bluetooth interface using the Linux Bluetooth protocol stack. To connect the controller to my programs, I have to press the 1 and 2 buttons, just as with the real game console. The Wii controller has two classes of motion sensors. The first class are three linear accelerometers that report changes in velocity along three orthogonal axes. This test program draws graphs of the raw accelerometer values and also a 3D representation of the Wii controller estimating its orientation from those values. The lowest curve is X acceleration, side to side. The second curve up is Y acceleration, forward and backward. The third curve is Z acceleration, up and down. You can see how the values change as I move the controller around. Unfortunately, the three accelerometers alone are not enough to figure out where the controller is and how it's oriented. For that, the controller would need rate gyros, but they are too expensive. You can only reliably measure pitch and roll, but not yaw. You can see how the virtual controller nicely follows if I pitch and roll it, but it doesn't sense when I rotate it horizontally. This is because orientation is estimated by measuring the direction of gravity, but the direction doesn't change when I rotate the controller in a horizontal plane. The second class of motion sensor on the Wii controller is its built-in camera. It sees in the infrared range and can track up to four infrared dots. To work, it needs an IR beacon like this homegrown one taped to the top of a monitor. It has four infrared LEDs arranged to form a tetrahedron. This is quite different from the sensor bar that comes with the Wii game console. That one only has two LED clusters at either end of it. The sensor bar only allows measuring yaw, which, together with pitch and roll measured using the accelerometers, gives the controller's full orientation. That is enough to use the controller like a mouse for icon and menu selection and aiming at the screen. To also measure the controller's absolute position, however, we need a custom beacon like this one. So how does the tracking work? The controller's camera only sees infrared, so if it sees any of the four IR LEDs, it reports their position relative to its imaging plane. In this simple test program, I use the accelerometers to measure pitch and roll, as before, but also take the LED positions reported from the camera and draw them on the screen as fat purple dots. You can see the dots appearing and moving around when I point the controller in the general direction of my beacon, which is mounted on top of the monitor. The difference between this program and the previous one is that, as soon as the camera sees at least one of the beacon's LEDs, the program uses the position of that LED on the camera's imaging plane to estimate the controller's yaw. If no LEDs are visible, it just keeps the last confirmed yaw angle and only updates pitch and roll. As you can see, this works pretty well and would have worked just as well using the original sensor bar. With this simple tracking program, we still don't get the controller's absolute position in space. The idea behind full position tracking is that, mathematically, the position and orientation of a rigid body in space, like the V-Controller, can be described using six values, three for position and three for orientation. If the controller's camera sees all four LEDs, it reports two values, namely X and Y in its image plane, for each LED, giving us eight values total. If we know the camera's focal length and the exact position of all four LEDs on the beacon, we can deduce the full position and orientation of the controller in space. Solving the system of overdetermined nonlinear equations is quite tricky, but today's computers are fast enough to do it in real time. This program measures the controller's position and orientation and then draws a 3D model at the same place as the real controller when viewed through the camcorder. The slight tracking delay is due to a low-pass filter I use to remove noise from the measurements and the occasional hiccups occur when the camera does not see all of the LEDs. Now this is what we've all been waiting for. If you can track the controller in space, you can draw a lightsaber blade so that it appears at the right position and orientation when viewed to the camera. Remember that this is not a video trick. The lightsaber blade is drawn on the computer monitor using a 3D program and just filmed by the camcorder along with the controller and everything else. I don't have an actual lightsaber game yet, but that wouldn't be so hard to do now. The next step, of course, is to minimize the tracking hiccups.
This is a demo virtual reality application that normally runs on high-end virtual environments like a cave. The program simulates a brick of virtual jello that you can pick up and throw around using a 3D input device like the fully tracked V controller. The small grey cone that sometimes appears is like a 3D mouse cursor that allows me to grab any part of the jello block and pull on it. The rest of the block follows around elastically. As in the first example program shown, I can use another button to pick up the entire virtual world instead to navigate around. This part shows how the controller can be used to interact with 3D menus and dialog boxes. These are not normal 2D user interface components provided by the OS and I'm not using the controller to simulate a mouse. These dialogs float in space and I interact with them through a laser pointer interface that allows me to press buttons, pull sliders and move dialog windows in 3D. Because tracking only works while pointing at the beacon, this part is still a little awkward. This is another virtual reality program I wrote for high-end equipment, but it also works here. It's a molecular dynamic simulation of nanostructures like buckyballs or nanotubes and can be used to build or destroy molecules manually. Here I'm tearing at a model of C60 Buckminster Fullerene, a naturally occurring molecule made of 60 carbon atoms. The program allows me to navigate by picking up the entire virtual world, as before, or touch and grab individual atoms, which will then follow the motions of the controller one to one. If I pull slowly, the rest of the molecule will deform and follow. If I pull too hard, I can rip atoms out of the molecule and then reconnect them later. I can also add more atoms or build an entirely new molecule from scratch.